Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dr. Andrew Kim, MD. I'm a board certified psychiatrist and today's video is called Opioid Withdrawal Explained in 10 Minutes. That's right, if you can stick with me for just 10 minutes, you will have a much better understanding of what occurs during opioid withdrawal and just have a better understanding of what one can expect during this process. Now, first of all, you've probably heard the two different terms uh, used interchangeably, opioid and opiate. So what is the difference? An opiate is a drug or a medication that's derived from the naturally occurring poppy plant. And these include drugs like opium, morphine, heroin, okay? Opioids are synthetic or man-made versions, and these include things like hydrocodone, oxycontin, fentanyl. So for the purpose of our video, we're going to say the word opioid, but the terms can be used interchangeably, opiate, opioid withdrawal, because essentially the withdrawal is going to look just about the same, all right? Now, in order to go through opioid withdrawal, one must have first developed a tolerance or somewhat of a physical dependence on these first. So what is a tolerance? Tolerance is when you start requiring higher and higher doses to achieve the same effect. So if you're using these responsibly for pain relief, you start realizing, hey, I've hit a point where now the same dose just doesn't work for me. I need more more or a higher dose to get pain relief than I used to. If you're using these to get high um, and for recreational purposes, um, again, you're like, this dose just doesn't do it for me anymore. I need more to get the same high, okay? So how long does it take to develop a tolerance or a physical dependence? Look, everyone's body is different. Everyone's tolerance is somewhat different. But in general, if you're using opioids on a daily basis, day in and day out, on a regular basis, it may be as short as even two to three weeks of daily use when you hit a point where you notice even a mild tolerance or dependence starts forming. Okay, so it could be as short as that. And in general, the longer that you have regular daily use, okay, and the higher your total daily requirement is, that puts you at a higher risk for more significant or severe withdrawal. So withdrawal can occur in a couple of different ways. The first method is what we call spontaneous withdrawal. That means when you decide, you know, you consciously decide I'm gonna stop taking my opioids or you simply run out of access. You ran out of money, you don't have refills, you can't afford it anymore. And because you ran out, you start going into withdrawal. The other way is called precipitated withdrawal. So you either get an antidote like naloxone or you go into a detox facility and you're getting uh, other prescription meds or drugs to basically put you into withdrawal, okay? Today's video is gonna focus more on spontaneous withdrawal, the scenario where uh, you, know, you decide to just stop taking these or you ran out and don't have access to them. So what are the timelines of when to start expecting withdrawal to occur. So if you're taking short-acting opioids, so these are opioids that get flushed out of your system rather quickly, okay, you can even start experiencing withdrawal anywhere from even uh, six hours, okay, six to 12 hours out from your last dose. Now, if you're taking longer-acting opioids, opioids that take a longer time for your body to get rid of, it may take even up to a full day before you start experiencing withdrawal. So it kind of depends on whether you're taking short acting or long acting ones. Now, the worst or the peak of the physical withdrawal symptoms that occur in the short term tend to peak around 72 hours, three days out from your last dose, all right, 72 hours. So now that we've gone over uh, when to expect uh, withdrawal to start, let's go over what are the most common signs and symptoms of opioid withdrawal. Now, the, the best way I kind of explain this to people is you can think of the withdrawal process of, in terms of what your body goes through as the opposite of what happens when you take these drugs or medicines. So for example, whether you're taking uh, heroin, uh, Oxycontin, fentanyl, etc. 
Uh, when you take these drugs or medicines, they tend to reduce pain. Uh, they usually make you sleepy or groggy. Um, they make you feel relaxed. Um, as a side effect, they get you constipated. And for those of you who are using it to get high, you feel good, okay? So think of the opposite. And that's what happens during withdrawal. And it feels like hell, okay? Anyone who's gone through this will tell you it feels like you're going through hell. So what I mean by that is, look, instead of constipation, you're getting severe nausea, severe vomiting, diarrhea. Instead of pain relief, you're getting severe muscle aches and pains, stomach cramps. You're getting sweats and chills, dilated pupils instead of pinpoint pupils, goosebumps, runny nose, uh, excessive yawning, severe, severe insomnia, and you also get psychological effects, okay? You are more edgy, more agitated. Um, your mood is not in a good place, okay? It is sad, it is depressed, you're having mood fluctuations, um, you have intense cravings to go use, and why wouldn't you, right? You're, you're feeling like hell, and you know that if I go right back to using, it's gonna calm all this down. So you have intense cravings to go use. And obviously when you feel like this, and you feel terrible physically and mentally, unfortunately that leads to an increase in suicidal thoughts as well. So there's a combination of just, you know, miserable physical withdrawal effects and even psychological withdrawal effects. So again, how long will this last, all right? So the peak, again, in the short term, the peak of this, the worst of the physical withdrawal, tends to be right around the 72-hour marker, about three days after you last used, okay? Everyone's different, but in general. And it still may take a full week to even two weeks for these physical symptoms to die down, and they still may linger for a little bit, but about that's about the time frame. Now, the psychological effects, um, those can linger for, unfortunately, weeks to months. This is a nightmare of a withdrawal to go through, especially when it's not mild. When you have moderate or severe withdrawal, it is terrible, okay? And it leads to this vicious cycle of, I don't want to feel this, so I'm going to go use again. And this is why I recommend that if you are considering getting off of opioids or opiates, please, please, please consult with your physician or licensed medical professional. Ask them what is the safest way and best method for your personal case of how to do this, okay? To do this in the safest fashion possible to increase your chances of, you know, maintaining sobriety, not going right back to using, because look, detox is just step one, okay? There's so many people who go through detox, go right back to using. So how do we help you set yourself up for success, okay? And not just think about the short term of getting off them in the short term future, but sustain not going back to them in the long term. So I recommend, again, seek professional help and guidance when you're considering anything like this versus trying to just do it on your own or looking up random help on the internet. So look, I hope that by the end of this video, you feel like you've learned some of the basic nuts and bolts and have a better understanding about what opioid withdrawal is and what to expect if you're gonna go through it. So if you like this type of content, please like, please share, please subscribe and follow, and stay tuned because I will have some upcoming videos about uh, what is uh, opioid detox like? What is, uh, what are some of the options that people use for long-term treatment? Things like uh, naltrexone, things like suboxone, methadone, what are these things? So again, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. For those of you who may be struggling with this out there, uh, I pray for you that you continue to fight the good fight. I know uh, this is not, not an easy thing to battle and fight but you are worth it, so please, please keep up that difficult but good fight because you are worth it. This is Dr. Andrew Kim signing off. Hope you guys are safe and well.